What up, everybody? It's your boy, Ricky Rick, and your boy, Ricky Rick, is back with another Ricky Talk, and today is March 8, 2024. In case you didn't know, now you know. Today, I want to talk to you guys about one of my favorite shows to come out this year in 2024. Um, the show is called The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, which is a sequel to the main flag show called The Walking Dead that ran 11 seasons from 2010 to 2022 now we're picking up where the story left off for our main lead who is being played by andrew lincoln rick grimes who he's known to portray in the flag show the walking dead so we're picking up where things left off with his story on the walking dead which was in season nine episode five where his character was taken from the location where he was at during the time of the walking dead to a new location that was unaware to everybody around him and was taken by a possible new threat and who is that threat what has our main character done through all these years because it's been a total of five to six years since the last time any of us has seen our main lead or known if he survived the outcome of episode five of season nine now not only do we have that going on, we also have another cast member from the flagship show, The Walking Dead, known as Michonne, being played by Diana Guerrero, who came during season three, became a main focus, a main cast member, and the main love interest to our main lead, Andrew Lincoln, Rick Grimes, who, during season 10, found an item, a few good items that led to us to believe that our main character is alive and might still be out in the world. So Michonne's journey is on finding out the truth. Is he out there? And she will do whatever it takes to find him. Now, with that said, you not only took our main actor, our main lead of the show, but you also took the main love interest. And now you have the story to come up with a sequel to The Walking Dead. That has no comics, no criteria to use or to fall on or to lean on to create the events of what happens next. So... The Walking Dead's The Walking Dead, the ones who live, takes place, depending whose story we're following here, Rick or Michonne's, because with Rick, we're picking up with him five years later. With Michonne, we're picking up with her six years later. Because that's how much time has passed in the flagship show. And we're seeing their stories play out of why Rick has been gone, why Rick hasn't come home. Who is this threat that taking Rick away from us? And how big of a threat are they? We're also seeing Michonne's story on how she is finding the connections to find Rick. How will she re reunite with Rick? And how will they get back home? Now, I also got to admit, this Pollyanna McIntosh actress playing Jadis on The Walking Dead, The Walking Dead World Beyond, and The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, has been doing an amazing job because she has me confused since day one. I don't know if she's good. She had me confused that she was a good person. She had me confused that she was a bad person. She had me confused that she's truly good. Is she just playing around? Is she just picking favorites? You know, she had me confused as like, is she really bad? Is she the villain? Or what are we doing with this character? Like, because she is playing a very good job of portraying someone who is mysterious, 
We don't really know too much about her. We don't know if we can trust her. So she's doing her job as an actress. And I love everything that she's been doing. And then the way they brought her back last week in episode two of The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, and having that moment one-on-one -on -one with Rick. Whoa. And we'll talk about that more. And speaking about the things that I want to talk about more, I want to talk about Rick Grimes. You know, it's been a long time since we've seen this character on screen. And he is the reason why I started watching The Walking Dead. It was recommended to me by one of my coworkers. He recommended me three shows, one being Breaking Bad, two being Sons of Anarchy, and number three, The Walking Dead. They're all three completely different shows. One about a teacher and a student making meth. Great show. Uh, another one being about a, a bike club and family and, you know, the things that can go on in there. Love that show. And the other one being a, a father living an apocalypse, trying to find his family and keep his family safe. Great shows. And now that we got Rick Grimes back, you know, and we're catching up with him and his side of the story and wrapping up his story. I'm enjoying it so far. You know, how do I feel about Rick Grimes losing his hand? You know, it's a th big thing in the comics that happens. People have been waiting for it. For me, I feel like if somebody loses their hand, they're not as strong. But, you know, this is acting. It's fictional. He still has his hand. So ask me how I feel after the first season wraps up. Wraps up. Uh, CRM, you know, they're known to be a big threat. The big threat of the season. How big of a threat. You know, we keep getting glimpses. They got this city. You know, they got helicopters. They got military trucks cars and guns weapons you name it they have ac they seem to have good life they even have news reporters and stuff going on they have bombs so they seem to have everything going for them uh the new characters esteban you know the guy from this pool from fx i love that guy donald he did an amazing first job killed him off nat did an very, he left me very impressed with his acting in episode two. Loved him. Want to see more of him? They killed him off. The Walking Dead is known for doing stuff like that. They know how to tell a great story and bring characters to life. And I love it when they do that. And then when they kill them off, I'm mad and pissed because they kill off characters that I really love. And that's one of the reasons why this show is very popular because they're not afraid to kill their main characters. How do I feel about Rick and Jadis and the deal that they got going on? Because it kind of seems like they have something like a deal that they made. Hey, you live here. You, you know, try to fit in and I won't go after your people and I won't kill them. I won't go after your loved ones. But we do know in the show that Rick has tried to escape. So how does the deal work and what other things are involved in this deal that Jadis and Rick have and why is Jadis being so hush hush about it why she doesn't want other people to know and just keeping it between them and then crossovers you know we've been hearing a lot about crossovers how the other characters the people that are know Rick have grown up with him have grown loyal to him and fight alongside him will get involved in this show you know we keep hearing that there's an end game there's, there's a plan and if CRM is the big threat, the final threat, will we get Morgan Jones? Will we get Daryl? Will we get Negan, Maggie, Carol to join Rick and fight this CRM? Will Alexandria come back to play? Will the Commonwealth come into play? How will this all tie up and wrap up in a nice bow? Is yet to be seen, but I can't wait to see it when it does happen. And in the good words of the man who portrayed Nate, we might just have to wait just a little bit longer. And speaking of waiting just a little bit longer, how long do we have to wait before we see Lenny James again, Morgan Jones cross over to The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, or Daryl, or Maggie, or Jeffrey Dean Morgan, or anybody else in The Walking Dead? Because in Daryl Dixon, we did hear with the phone call that somebody came back to Alexandria, somebody came back to Commonwealth. Was it Morgan? And then we've been getting two Easter eggs in two different episodes mentioning something that involves Morgan. So Morgan might be the first person to cross over in The Walking Dead, the ones who live besides Michonne. So we'll see. Will they bring another actor from the original show to come and help Brig and Michonne escape? 
on the CRM. What would I like to see more happen in the show? I definitely would like to see some of the other popular characters from The Walking Dead come join forces. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing some people from Fear, some people from World Beyond come over and somehow get involved. So this becomes like a whole end game. But yeah, overall, I want to feel more of the CRM being bad guys. Because I think, yeah, we see that they have bad shit. You know, military stuff, military weapons, all this. But we haven't seen them really be bad or torture people or kill people. So I want to see that part. And I want to see the main bad guy, General Beale, this main bad guy, be more of a bad guy, like ruthless. Because to me, besides the governor and the guy who plays Jeffrey D. Morgan as Negan, we haven't really had like a bad guy. Like a really cool, badass guy. And what else? Yeah, I just want to see Rick Grimes do his thing. Be a hero. Kicking ass, killing walkers, taking down bad guys, and saving the day. Um, yeah, and hopefully we get a nice wrap-up to this long story. And hopefully it makes sense. That's what I want to see. Well, and obviously see Rick reunite with his family, his friends, his loved ones, the ones who are still alive. Because this is The Walking Dead, the ones who live. All that, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. As always, it's your boy Ricky Rick. If I'm not making you laugh, I'm not making you smile, keeping you insane, giving you something to think about, talk about your boy Ricky Rick ain't doing his job, and you already know your boy Ricky Rick does his job. Until next time, I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.